While not the Old West's most famous figure, the life of John Henry Selman is certainly one of the most infamous. Sometimes referred to as Old John or Uncle John, he would operate in a variety of roles, including a soldier, lawman, and evil outlaw. But John Selman is best known as the man who shot John Wesley Hardin at the Acme Saloon in El Paso, Texas on August 19, 1895. John Henry Selman was born on November 16, 1839, in Madison County, Arkansas. His family moved to Grayson County, Texas in 1858. Tragedy struck in 1861 when Selman's father died. That prompted the young man to join the 22nd Texas Cavalry and fight in the Civil War, according to his father's wishes while he was still alive. Over a year later, he left Fort Washita, Oklahoma in October 1863. He then sailed for Stevens County, where he joined the Texas State Militia in 1864. In April 1865, he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant because he had successfully completed the assigned tasks. On August 17, 1865, Selman married Edna de Graffenried and they soon welcome their first child. Eventually, the couple will have four children together. Looking for new opportunities, Selman quickly moved his family to Colfax County, New Mexico, before moving back to Texas and settling in Fort Griffin. Under John M. Larn, Shackelford County Sheriff, John Henry Selman began his career as Deputy Sheriff. The vicinity of Fort Griffin during that era was notorious for its lawlessness, leading the settlement to be nicknamed Babylon on Brazos. In this decadent environment, notable figures such as Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, Kate Bignose, Dave Rudabaugh, Lottie Dino, Pat Garrett, and John Wesley Hardin have traversed its streets. However, Sheriff John Larn hides a dark nature behind his elegant appearance. Soon after taking over as sheriff, Larn signed a secret agreement with a local garrison, committing to deliver three heads of cattle a day. Regrettably, Larn does not intend to actually uphold these contractual obligations. When Selman joined, the duo herded cattle from other ranchers. Instead of maintaining law and order, Larn and Selman used their position to control vigilante factions, exacerbating cattle thefts, and spreading terror throughout the county. However, ranchers quickly grew suspicious when they observed that while their herd was dwindling, Sheriff Larn's herd was inexplicably unharmed. As a result, on March 7, 1877, Larn was forced to resign as sheriff, making way for his deputy, William Kruger, to take the position. Later, Larn and Selman turned to rustling cattle. Their actions include recklessly chasing cattle, shooting horses, and shooting guns, sowing terror into the hearts of innocent people. Of course, an arrest warrant for Larn was issued in June 1878, with William Kruger in charge of arresting his former superior. On June 22nd, Larn was taken to Fort Griffin Jail where Kruger, fearing any potential rescue attempt, enlisted the help of the local blacksmith who tied Larn by chaining him. The next night, a group of masked men launched a daring attack on the prison, their aim being to kill Larn. While they met Larn in chains, they shot immediately, ending the brutal man's short life. Selman went into hiding during this time, as he also faces charges of deserting from the Union Army. Fleeing to Mexico, he hopes to avoid the legal consequences that await him. However, with the cessation of the war and the subsequent dissolution of the Confederacy, all previous charges against Selman were nullified, allowing him to freely return to the United States without fear of prosecution. Tragedy struck Selman's life in 1879 when his beloved wife tragically died giving birth to a stillborn child. 
The remaining four children were left in the care of his wife's niece. At this time, Selman resided in Lincoln County, New Mexico, a violent period known as the Lincoln County War. It was around this time that Selman formed an outlaw gang known as Selman Scouts. The group is accused of committing multiple acts of rape and murder in the area. It is noteworthy, however, that no formal charges have been brought against Selman in connection with these heinous crimes. One notable individual involved in gang activities was Roscoe Bryan, who died instantly at the hands of gang members near Seven Rivers, New Mexico, in September 1878. Bryan's body was discovered along with Reese the Elf and James Irvin. Notably, Bryan became a victim of the violent world under the leadership of John Selman. By 1880, Selman's gang had moved out of Lincoln County to Jeff Davis County, Texas. Their criminal activities continue. Sometime later, Selman was arrested shortly thereafter by Texas Ranger Joe McKidrick and taken to Shackleford County for trial. However, Selman quickly escaped, fleeing to Chihuahua, Mexico, where he hid until about 1888. During his time in Mexico, he made arrangements for his children. While the youngest two were with him, the two oldest remained in Brown County, Texas, never seeing their father again. Later, Selman moved to El Paso, Texas, where he began a new chapter of his life. On August 23, 1893, Selman married Romula Grenadine, and he found work as a policeman. However, gambling became a pastime for him. On April 5, 1894, Selman got into a fateful encounter with a former Texas Ranger named Bass Outlaw. The outlaw was recently fired for drinking and threatening to target a judge. Selman stumbles across the drunken outlaw and urges him to return home and sleep. However, outlaw refused, leading the two men to make their way to Tilly Howard's brothel, a local brothel that outlaw frequented. Outlaw was intoxicated, causing an uproar that culminated in his shooting Texas Ranger, Joe McKidrick. In the ensuing chaos, Selman was wounded by a bullet in the thigh. He shot back, ending Outlaw's life. Selman faced no legal consequences for this shooting, as it was considered legitimate self-defense. The following year, on August 19, 1895, El Paso police and Selman's son, John Jr., arrested John Wesley Hardin's prostitute girlfriend. Dissatisfied, Hardin immediately whipped John Jr. with a pistol and threatened his life. After hearing the argument, Selman went to see Hardin on the afternoon of August 19, 1895. The two exchanged angry words. That night, Hardin sadly goes to Acme Saloon where he starts playing dice. Just a short time later, Selman follows him into the pub and unexpectedly shoots Hardin in the back of the head. As Hardin lays on the floor, Selman fires three more shots at him. Selman was arrested soon after, charged with murder and put on trial. Selman swears he opened fire in self-defense. It was a hung jury, leading to his release, pending a retrial. On the night of April 5, 1896, he ran into Vice Marshal of the United States, George Scarborough, who had been a close friend of Bass Outlaw, whom Selman had killed. In an instant, their conversation turned into an argument, then a gunfight. At that time, Selman quickly drew his gun, shot first but missed, and Scarborough took advantage of that opportunity, accurately shooting to finish his opponent. Finally, John Selman is buried in El Paso's Concordia Cemetery in the Catholic Quarter. A trial soon followed. Scarborough was acquitted of murder on April 5, 1900. Scarborough was killed in a gunfight with George Stevenson and James Brooks four years after he shot and killed John Selman. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.